here we're right near the edge of the Hudson Yards development where the official Hudson Yards development is. You can see all the beautiful buildings around here nearing completion but this is just the first phase. And you can see here this other building that is going to have the roof have the uh, space for people to walk out on. It's just an amazing area around here. As you can see Hudson Yards, some more of the buildings that have went up near, nearing completion. Just an amazing job they're doing. Making sure everything gets done as scheduled. And that's not easy. And you can see right in front of us is the shed, but then right behind it is one of the other buildings that's scheduled for completion shortly. And then we have another apartment building that went up nearby. This whole area is gonna be very popular. So all the owners around here had, uh, who could and who didn't have to worry about the Hudson Yards development put up their buildings. It's kind of like the, uh, uh, the near effect of like when you have a beautiful development if you put up something nearby you have you capture that additional value that the major development is doing and that's what a lot of owners around here have done they've been able to put up structures nearby and they didn't have to pay additional amounts for the property because they already owned it and by putting up their own development, now they've captured the value that, uh, the additional value that was a result of the Hudson Yards development going up. And we'll take a closer look at some of these buildings from the southern side of these buildings. southern view of that building that has the observation deck at the very top and we're right next to that other tall building that is pretty much done but it's just beautiful to be in an area in the courtyard of the building and we'll go down to this level to the person's level just to see what the courtyard looks like around here and uh, there's still a lot of construction going on due to the vessel and the shed being right nearby but you can see things are under construction and they have a lot to do but these buildings around here are amazing this building that houses the uh, the observation deck it's nearing completion that's what we're looking at right now that observation deck that's at the very top just to see it from this courtyard vantage point and you can see the construction work that's being done and the crane that's still there to do everything it's really amazing seeing that it's almost like you're there and as I said it's going to be an observation deck that people can walk out on and be exposed to the environment. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of precautions, but it's not unheard of. It's been done in many cities to have an observation deck. And usually, one of the reasons why buildings like it is because it generates a lot of revenue. For example, when you go to the very top of the World Trade Center, it's $35 per person for a one-time charge to go to the very top. So it's, it's a very lucrative business. Rockefeller Center has the same situation where people pay to go to top of the rock. Empire State Building, people pay to go to the very top of the Empire State Building. It pays for itself. That's why the buildings really enjoy those observation decks. Building that's right in front of that object called the shed. You can see how they did such a great job on that building.
And there's so many other wonderful buildings around here too. And you can see the vessel right nearby, which is going to be the centerpiece once they complete construction in 2025. As you see, all these tracks that are here are going to be covered up, but that's uh, just part of the long-term project. And you can see these other two buildings that are nearing completion. Normally with developments, what they like to do is they like to finish one part, have the money coming in, and then start on another part. And that's what they're doing here too, because to try to do everything at once is not smart because it's very costly, because you have so much equipment, so much in motion at the same time. And you can see these train yards that are here. It was a long-term decision how to use these train yards, and they realized that the best bet would be to cover them up and to put buildings here. And then you can see in the distance the Jacob Javits Center. That's the greenish building that's there. And um, it's a beautiful building inside. Just beautiful to attend different events at the Javits Center. And many people really enjoy that there. Take a look around to see some of the other developments that are right near Hudson Yards but are not actually Hudson Yards. And this is as I was mentioning earlier, there's a, a lot of developers that own the land that for their purposes they owned it because they wanted to own it. And Hudson Yards came along and they were in luck. It was like hitting the lottery. So their space became much more valuable and so they were able to do what they wanted to do with the, their properties. You know, obviously the highest value would be to put up uh, an office tower or an apartment complex because that's where people would want to live. Um, but it's up to them how they want to do it, how the land is zoned. And it's going to be just a great thing for everyone. And this is just to show you what the area around here looks like. So that you just don't think it's only the Hudson Yards. And since the project isn't going to get done until 2025, uh, these other buildings around here will be changing slowly over the next 10, 20, 30 years. I'm sure it'll become more like the Hudson Yards, but it just depends on the owners and the city. Some of the owners are going to say, look, they don't want to put up something big. They want to keep, keep their property the way it was. Now, the danger with that is someone's going to come along, someone bigger, more powerful is going to say, I need that property. And they're going to go to the city and they're going to go to the state and they're going to say, can you help me? And the city and the state will say, you know what? You have a point. You're better off putting up a 50-story structure on that property rather than leaving it as a two-story property. And then they might have, uh, the city and the state might use eminent domain. So that's part of the calculation that a lot of owners have around here. Do they keep it the way it is and are happy with what they have, but then they run the risk of some bigger developer coming along and trying to seize the property? Um, it's up to them. So I'm sure that goes through everyone's mind like what they're going to do with their properties. But this whole neighborhood is going to change dramatically. And everyone knows that. And we'll take a look to the north to see what the northern part of Manhattan looks like from here. You can see in the distance, we'll get a close-up view of some of the buildings. You can see it's just beautiful seeing that. is the area of the Hudson Yards looking more to the northwest and then looking as we turn to the west. That's New Jersey and that's the Hudson River that we're seeing in the distance. But this is the view that the Hudson Yards is gonna have for a long, long time. Another view. This is uh, from the High Line. That's where we're doing the filming of the Hudson Yards project. And that's the building again that we had seen that was right in front of the shed. We 
lot of beautiful work has been done on all these buildings. As I said before, a lot of planning took place to get everything to this point. So what we're seeing is the result of years and years of effort, years and years of thinking. And I think that's really the case with a lot that goes on. We, uh, we look at buildings that have been around for 10, 20, 50 years, 100 years, and neglect to remember how much work was put into the buildings prior to their construction. And you can see here, Hudson Yards, the railroad yards. And we'll take a closer look at these buildings too, because what's nice to see is the ongoing development and comparing the buildings from tape to tape because it changes and you can see the nature of the changes and how close they are to completion. And here we'll take an even closer look at these buildings. You can see here this one building on a bright Sunday. Very easy to see how close it is to being completed. All the work that went into that, all the effort, you can see at the very top, they're getting closer and closer to finishing off everything. And let's take a look down on the building here again. top part. You can see how close they are to finishing the very top of the building. And that's always a very good sign. Once they finish the top part, then they're able to work on the interior. And then once they reach that certain point where everything is done, all the electrical work is done, all the plumbing work is done, the heating work is done, then they can give it to a tenant or someone who wants to rent out the space. And then the tenant or the person renting out the space spends millions of dollars to fix it up to their liking. And then here, there's another building right in the center of all this. We'll take a closer look at that too, because it's always good to take a look at the number of the buildings, at a number of the buildings that are getting done, so that everyone can make their own decisions as to what it's like. I think that's so important for people to make their own determination what they think is important. Now again, that's the building that's gonna have the, the top portion allowing tourists to walk outside and see the city of New York. It's allegedly one of the highest vantage points in the country where tourists are able to go outside and see a city. Then we'll take a look at that building that we had spoken about before that's right in front of the shed. That would be a nice building. I'm sure because it's going to have that connection with the shed, it's going to have that extra advantage where during inclement weather, whoever's in the building and wants to attend an event can easily go to the shed and take time there. I think eventually this whole area is going to be interconnected. Uh, through either tunnels or through areas where people can walk and avoid any of the weather. So you could go here during the day, in the morning, and then in the evening, you're all set to go home. You can see here, the people walking right by here, all part of this beautiful neighborhood.